first things that I noticed when I was in the classroom was the, the position of the teacher's podium. The fact that the teacher's podium is right in the center means that students have access to the teacher and the teacher has access to the students to see you know, what, what exactly is going on. Not having a front of the class means also that you don't have the back of the class. That moved me a little bit out of my comfort zone. I tried to stand in different parts of the classroom so that all of the students would be more physically close to me at one time or another. I think there was a little bit of a discomfort still for the students who were used to the more traditional, let me just go and hide and be quiet in the back of the class. I mean, there's no place to hide in this classroom. Everybody is engaged. I'm now reading the student learning logs. For the first time, I have not seen any teen complain about somebody who was not engaged, who pulled out, who had an easy ride, who was a couch potato. Now, isn't that something? The active learning classroom is designed such that it compels students to participate because of the round tables, for example. We can work in group, and in small group, we can just share what we are learning. The students have misconceptions about language, and then I might say, well, no, it doesn't work like that. Check. Just for fun, test what I say. Type in comma that. See how many hits you get. Do it now, like right now. That way you can actually check the idea online right away and to confirm this idea. Oh, maybe. Oh, 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 no. uh, maybe she has. The particular activity I like is the, the activity where we write on the board. No, no, it's there is my no sister has no. two children. There's only upside to this. You do something in the, the active learning classroom, it can go back into a conventional classroom after in a different way. This has been one of my most enriching teaching experiences. Oh. We've had a breakthrough! <laughs> I'm going to introduce the model to start with now, and then what we're going to do is we're going to look at... With the advent of the new classrooms that we're operating with, the interaction level has increased substantially. So students now can teach themselves on three different levels. First, they teach themselves by working with the student that's immediately sitting beside them. It's structured that way that they can see other students work. Second, they're in modules of six to eight students around a table, and they all have these discussions about problems that they're coming across the model. And then the third thing, because of being able to display everything on the screens and being able to see this, whenever there's a problem a student arrives at, as an instructor, I can put it up on the screen instantly, and the students all together in the class can actually solve that problem. Okay, so this is Maya's graph here. Now, something's happened here, right? What have we done? This classroom really was great for a modeling course. I really don't even understand how it could have been taught without um, an interactive dynamic between um, the professor and students. And this process of interaction mimics actually the research process uh, uh, quite well. So we teach them in education, or they think in education, that being wrong isn't good. Actually in this course, being wrong is really good because it actually helps you learn the next stage. I believe that people learn modeling through experience. I think I actually teach about 90% less than I did before, and I facilitate now students learning how to model themselves. It's a real gift, in a sense, to get to know your students and to allow them to have experiences that they don't normally have in classrooms by sitting with them at their tables and being able to understand what problems they were encountering and resolving problems. And I was able to see how they were making connections. And then I was able to bring in some of that material from other courses and explicitly structure problems around the idea of making links between, say, property law and criminal law or property law and contract law. I like to organize my thoughts and I like to be able to write things out. So for me, it's, it's helpful to be able to put everything on a board where everyone can see it as opposed to just my own sheet. And then having it as a focal point in the room, you can look around and see, okay, well, they said these things and we didn't get that. Or, oh, yeah, we have the same things as they did. So it's a, it's a nice way to sort of solidify all the conversations that had been had. When they write on the walls, they're accountable to the room as a whole for what they've written. Um, they become responsible for each other's learning. At certain tables it became clear that when one person hadn't read that that was seen as letting the table down. It made them responsible for each other's 
learning in a way that I thought was really interesting. I've, I've kind of been won over. I've had a, I've had a great time. It's my, the class I enjoy the most because I'm the most engaged in it. I'm a big supporter of this kind of learning. I think it actually transfers important responsibilities back to the student that I think have sat on the shoulders of the professor. And I think that's always a good thing when students are more invested in their education and more invested in what they're learning. Um, and this space certainly um, conduces to that kind of thing. So.